Life in a world that keeps changing Think that it's progress you're making Copy and paste pretty faces All the time Pictures so perfect we play Hello wonderful people, welcome back again to my channel. I greet all of you according to Una time. Yes, so my wonderful people, I don't come again with another great one. Alright, before I go drop the video sharply, if today not the first time you you come across my channel, you are highly welcome. And to all my returning subscribers, I appreciate all of you as until they support this platform they come. And if you never subscribe, I beg, help me hit on that subscribe button. Put on the notification bell so that anytime we be say I drop any new video, you will be the first person to constantly check them out. And if you find this video interesting, like the video, also share the video so that other people will still see them. Leave your opinion for the comment section. Using intimidation from DSS, from the army, from the police everywhere. But Buhari forged a certificate, which is worse than terrorism according to the same, the same presidency. Buhari forged his own certificate in 2015. It's all there. We have our, we have our back here. Euro, it was Yoruba media at the instigation of Tinubu that buried the, the whole story. The case went to court. The judges said, hey, how can you say somebody who is the major general in the army did not have school certificate? <laughs> that was it. But that wasn't the question. The question is, is this certificate being presented to INEC original or fake? How can you say that somebody who is a general in the army has a first certificate? According to Nigeria's um, law courts, if forging certificates in the case of Kemi Adeoshu is worse than being a terrorist, how come... Buhari forged his own certificate in the film before he died in 2017. That tells you all you need to know. To keep Nigeria won is a task that must be done. <laughs> it was something that Go One said many, many years ago that led Maxwell Chicks to write very movingly, and I quote. If you don't see anything wrong in Nigeria, something is wrong with you. If you think that Nigeria is normal, then you are not normal. You are abnormal. All of you that see Nigeria as normal, you are all abnormal. And uh, somebody also lamented, of course. Do you know one very funny thing? about all these politicians and those of them, the affiliates we have, where we come from. Only yesterday, Boko Haram was attacking the hometown of the so-called hard man, the police inspector general, in Yobe, in Gaidam. The hometown of the so-called inspector general of police, Fulani, Osman Baba Al-Kali. People were attacking his home. He did not send soldiers nor send uh, police because they were in, in, in our war. I will demolish, I will demolish, and I will come mama killing people. <laughs> Innocent people. That's Nigeria for you. No wonder the zoo has overtaken Congo as the country with the worst access to electricity in the whole world. Zoo. In the whole world, the worst access to electricity. There is coal, there is oil and gas, there is sunlight. From coal, you can build thermal power stations as they do in China. From the sun, you can solar panels, of course, everywhere. And uh, from oil and from gas, however you want it, you can generate electricity, but in the zoo now, because the full army have tied your future, locked it up and padlocked it more or less, and threw the key into the ocean. That is why all of us are floundering. And that brings me to OKC Basu and some of the other useless idiotic governors you have in the East. OKC Basu was quoted just a few days ago saying, We are demanding an apology over the crimes against Ndibo, according to OKC Basu. That was what he said in that very 
Vanguard newspaper publication. Then, okay, Zipa has a very simple question. If you knew all these things, why did you go ahead to finish even, uh, to invite the army and police to come and finish those that survived the war? When Patton Dance, uh, these people, army and police came to my house to kill me, they invaded my home as they did to the consul's home. They took away all the things in my house, went to Okazi uh, uh, Azor and was showing it to him as trophies of war. They went to war in Isama Faruku. They came for war in my house. And some of them were promoted in the army, some from Brigadier to Major General. Their tour of duty was Isama Faruku and Mekano's compound. We went there. We went to fight a war. We didn't see him, but we went to fight a war. And we killed 28 people. In Okezi Bazo's office. So he knew that a great injustice was done to their fans, yet he invited army and police to come and kill those do so who that survived the war. Because I'm a survivor of the war. I was born a Biafran in the middle of the war. I was born a Biafran. I survived the war. Okay, Z Bazo invite the same people is asking to tender apology, he invited them to come and finish off those who are left. Anyways, the zoo. What, what do you expect? They keep raiding our land. The governors only have strength when it comes to the killing of their brothers and their own sisters. That is the uh, evil but Hey, they love it. <laughs> Including we can, when it comes to the killing of their own people, but any time the full army are ravaging, killing, raping, pillaging, you will never, they will never hold a meeting. Have you noticed it? Look at all those who won in massacre, Nimbo massacre. Look at all of them. Number, um, um, I am a massacre. Never, not one single meeting. When it comes to killing, the killing of their own people, they call bishop, they call Ohanese, they call, they have a meeting. What does that tell you about these people? What does that tell you about these people and all those? that are supporting them. Their strength is in the killing of their own people. Today, they're holding a meeting in Enugu. Government house, security, the, the burning of uh, hopes of the mass house. But Enugu state governor, Ifan Ubrani, you went to where house people are trading because it is illegal, of course. You want to redevelop the place. They call it Hausa. You know, when they, you know, full army, they are very clever. When they want to commit atrocity, they hide on that Hausa immediately. Hausa people being attacked at Ibaraba. Hausa people, this is his full army. Janja weed. The real stuff. In Enuku state. Now, I want people to consider this for a second. Do you think that if you are or Ibazo or any of them, or Obiano, imagine that Obiano went to Ayamalum, for instance, and he was or he went to the Chamin market, or maybe Newi, called Newi, and ESN was there brandishing assault rifles and chased him away. Do you think do you know what will happen? Nigeria Air Force will level in Newi. It will not have to ten minutes, it never will become the will of it. But full army people, now listen to this very carefully. Full army people in Enugu chased away an evil governor in Enugu. The people instrumental, these are the people that always invite the army and police to kill their own people. I want people to understand how evil the governors are in the East. I want you to understand it. Um, I will ask you again. Can you imagine what could happen to any place where any sitting governor is confronted by men with arms? What do you think will happen? But the thing is that this thing happened inside any where you have 82 division of the Nigerian military. The people that tried to raid on my house. Who gave those Fulanese the AK-47 they were carrying with which they used to chase away a sitting governor? 
you know, they, they say we hate them. We don't hate anybody. It is their behavior, the way they behave. You, if you understand these people, no single soul will throw any governor anywhere in our land. Maybe out of hunger, they will. A serving, a sitting governor was chased away by a fallen armed man inside the Enugu. 82 division did not respond. The Nigeria police did not respond. Now, let us go back a little bit before now. Remember the MNA massacre that happened last year? MNA massacre, you remember it? We are those people carrying guns in MNA. Did they threaten anybody? The answer is no. But the army came, DSS came, and killed them. Just because somebody said that this could be, this could be the IPOB Biafrans. But in the same city, in the same Enugu, in broad daylight, full army people chased away the governor with AK-47. It is the division did not come. DSS did not come. The police did not come. Now tell me how you can love such governors. Just, uh, just come explain that to me. What we need is action. People are people keep telling me all the time we need action. But if we are not disciplined, we cannot win. Action comes with discipline. A lot of discipline. We cannot be fighting or prosecuting a war with multiple enemies and we lack discipline we cannot do that please very very important we cannot afford to be ill disciplined we cannot afford to be ill disciplined that is why discipline is key under one unified central command under one unified central command i remember something that i'm not about discipline but i'm just telling our men on the ground about the, the need for discipline and calm head very very important that we incorporate that into our thinking now they are killing us they are arresting they are dotting all over the place people are not talking but of course, very, very soon. I don't want to go into details, but um, uh, we shall see what is going to happen very, very soon. We shall see. We shall see. We are in serious morning, I'll tell you that. We are. Terrorists are in charge and they're killing us some people. And your so called governors are there pointing out that other people to be killed. Whereas four army men in our land with AK-47, not for one single day, have we heard that the army confronted them or the police? Not one single day. But the sitting governor is more than comfortable to have his own people killed. Now they are meeting, but it's too late. Way too late. As you know, no dialogue and no discussion. We are all going to die. On this very day, this very sad day for me, very, very sad indeed, I couldn't possibly continue to preach. Because he is in heaven, watching over us right now, and willing and wishing us to go ahead to finish this very work that he was a part of. We shall honor him in a very great way. Nigeria will remember the death of the consul. Forever and ever, they will. So will the world. I thank you all for listening this very evening. As we continue to mourn the consul, vengeance will no longer belong to Elohim. It shall belong to us. Temporarily, at least. But for me, from here, a very sad evening. Yeah.